Appreciate that. All right, take a Bible, look to Revelation with me. We'll find the last book of your Bible. And let me just uh, inquire in your comfort. Um, uh, are you too warm? Anybody too warm? No. Anybody too cold? Well, stop it. You know, how come it's not a surprise that corner is the cold corner? Yeah, it's the heart issue. Uh, cold heart. Uh, I had no surprise there. You that are visiting, thank you for coming. And we do laugh. We're not reverent here. Um, this is, we're here all the time. Come back tonight. We have a security teachers, everybody kind of meeting tonight at 545. The evening service will be at 630. And we're talking about just keeping the church functioning and flowing in, in awkward and unusual circumstances. And so certainly all of you that work on security, all of you who are teachers, adult or children's teachers, any area of teaching, please come. And uh, I know some of you work Sunday nights, but you that can be here, um, we want to take care stewardship. Let's just talk about that. Stewardship is taking care of this that God has given us and knowing how to properly care for, protect, and minister to God's people. And that's the nursery, and that's all those children up there. Um, we want to take good care of it. And uh, just in case you haven't been here when I said it, thank you for your financial generosity and a lot of physical work in, re in remodeling. Boy, you've done uh, so very much, and I appreciate that a lot. But uh, so uh, being at church Sunday night 630 and then Wednesday night uh, we have our Bible study at 7 now I do we have a Wednesday afternoon Bible study at 330 you that go to that um, I told you Wednesday I was going to be there my wife and I made it because of a grandbaby um, we, we decided to, we're going to be at a conference in Santa Clara we're going to stay one day longer so uh, my son Josh who just sang my son-in-law Matt they are going to take care of the afternoon Bible study, and the teenagers will be there, right? Teenagers, you're all going to be there to make the seniors and those that come on Wednesday happy. Um, and then um, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, be here, and Josh and I have already talked about his message. You'll enjoy that. And I don't tell anybody what to preach, but he did feel like telling me, so that's great. So, um, but my wife and I will be back um, probably Thursday or Friday. We'll be back before the weekend. So, um, and we will be seeing our college students at Golden State Baptist College. If you want to send anything uh, to them that's not too big, um, get it to us tonight at the evening service, and we'll bring it up to our young people. Revelation in your Bible, Revelation chapter 19. Now today... Uh, I'm going to do something very unusual. We're going to have a bunch of pictures, and I'm going to try and help you understand a little bit of what's going on. The media, all this media all over, they would love to make you worried. The Bible says, fret not. The Bible says, fear not. Uh, the Bible says, what is man? Who even cares about what people do? I made the great biblical profound statement last week that if God were to blow his nose, Putin wouldn't make a booger. That's a deep theological statement. I don't mean it disrespectfully of God. I could be more disrespectful of Putin. I really don't care. Tyrants are a dime a dozen in history. They come and they go. And if you got rid of this one, another one would take his place. Uh, we have a great God, only one. And uh, there is a one place on this planet that just exudes the hope of freedom. And the devil's after that place. It's where you live. And uh, freedom in America are one of the most unique things in all the history of humanity. And a great, great privilege. Let's, look, let's stand for a moment. We're going to read in Revelation chapter 9. And we're going to start down at verse 14. Revelation chapter 9. And I'm going to be back and forth in the book of Ezekiel and in the book of Revelation. Basically, those two books, Ezekiel's about two-thirds through your Bible. Uh, Revelation 9, look down at verse 14, Revelation 9, 14, um, saying, so there's a voice that came saying in verse 14, to the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose, the four angels which are bound in the river, the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year 
for to slay the third part of men. One third of the world's population, two billion people will die at this moment, verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jantic and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone by these was a third part of men killed by the fire by the smoke by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth now this is not symbolic this is real there is going to be a third of the population of the world killed and um, this is not uh, yet Armageddon it's not the last battle this is uh, this is some very bad days and I want to talk to you about what you're going to be doing during the bad days. So let's pray. Father, bless your book as we look at it. Help us to understand. I know we have people here who have been saved decades. We have people here today who may not be saved yet, just interested in the things that are eternal. I pray you'd bless everyone. You, Lord, we need you to speak to people. and Help us. Help our children in the kids' classes. And may these kids grow up with faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Why don't you put the screens down? And uh, I'm going to use this handheld mic here. And so I'm going to I'm going to run through some things. If you're in Revelation nine, uh, there there you just put up that first map and um, look there at uh, Revelation nine where we read. And um, let's go over to chapter sixteen, Revelation chapter sixteen and verse twelve. And um, Revelation 16, verse 12. And it says in Revelation 16, 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial on the great river Euphrates, and the, way, uh, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The way of the kings of the east. Now, in Revelation 9, we read about an army of 200, 100, how, a, a 200 million man army. How would that sound? Okay. Um, and now in Revelation 16, we read about God drying up the Euphrates River. Now, what we're looking at here, oh, that's a nice flashlight. Um, that's another nice flashlight. Now I blinded myself. I can't see which one makes it work. There we go. All right, over here, takes a look, you get what you pay for, all right? <laughs> and this is a free light. Uh, it's got a flashlight on How do I get that thing shut off? All right, I just pulled it out of my drawer. I don't know how to use this. All right, there's Israel. Israel right over there, and here's North Africa. Here's Israel. And we just read of an army of 200 million people and... We read that the Euphrates River would be dried up, which both of those have already happened. Um, China has, uh, can, can easily put together an army of that size. And the Euphrates River um, uh, over here, um, the Euphrates River has been dammed many, many years ago. And so we've got the kings of the east. So 200,000, uh, the, uh, the verse gives us there. Uh, Revelation 9, 16. And so you've got over here these kings, plural, not just one, but it's going to be a conglomerate of kings who are going to come, uh, probably North Korea, China, all of these islands, uh, Vietnam and Korea, all this area, India, Pakistan, all of this working their way over um, towards Israel, that little tiny country that would fit in Los Angeles County, basically. All right, you good with that? Go to that next, next uh, map you guys have up there. So here's uh, maybe a little bit. These are biblical terms. If you want to find Ezekiel chapter 38, keep Revelation. All right, mark Revelation. Go back to Ezekiel, and uh, let's see if we can find. Uh, we'll look at Ezekiel in a minute, but let me, let me find it so I've got it as well. Ezekiel chapter 38, and uh, Psalms in the middle. Go past Psalms the You'll find Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then the next big book is Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 38. Now, from this, 
these places, Magog, Rosh, Gomer, Meshach, Tubal, Libya, Ethiopia, some of these names are still the same. But if you look at a map of Africa, and you're my age, half the countries in Africa have changed their names. So you understand all the way back to the book of Ezekiel to today, a lot of countries have changed their name, but we can get basic geography. Um, so Ethiopia is the same, Libya is the same, uh, Gomer probably Germany, or at least in that area, since Germany wasn't Germany yet, how do you say it was Germany, right? Uh, the lines weren't all drawn, but from Germany over to Russia, down to China, and the kings of the east are all going to be focused on, on Israel. And down here, there's multiple nations in North Africa that are going to be coming up from the south. All right, so look with me at Ezekiel chapter 38. And uh, let's just look at a verse or two. Look at Ezekiel 38 verse 15. We're going to go back and forth. Ezekiel 38, 15. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee. Um, probably many nations, many people, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army. We were just reading in Revelation about this mighty army, right? Um, in verse 16, And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land, and it shall be in the latter days. Now, if you mark your Bible up, that latter days, that makes it clear. It's not talking about Ezekiel's time, and it's not talking about where we're living. This is at the time when Jesus is about to come back, when he's about to return in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land. Now let's stop for just a minute, and I, gotta, I should follow my sermon notes, but that little phrase, I will bring thee against my land. Who's bringing this army from the north? God is. So could I just say to begin with, don't fear. Don't fear. There is nothing that can enter into your life or mine, but that it filters through the hands of a God who loves us more than anything. Loves us so much, he would give his son to die for us. And the news that wants you to be afraid, and all the social media panic that wants you to be afraid, and oh no, what are we going to do? D did any of you remember when there were lines for gas? Remember that? If you're over 50, you probably, I don't I remember the last time there were lines, but I remember lines you get gas and then there was a time if your license plate was odd you got gas money on this day and if it was an even number of gas on this day and, and uh, look we are not hurting look at your waistline and tell me life is bad i'm not making fun of you i'm just saying god's been good and uh some of you it's pregnant and others have other things uh, uh, all right so uh Go, go to that third, the next, the next, uh, we got one more map. So looking at this map, this gives you, and we're going to look at these in the Bible in a minute. In fact, let, let's go ahead and read this. You're still in Ezekiel 38. Uh, let's see if we can't find it. Go back to Ezekiel 38 too. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, uh, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So there's somebody that is the chief prince of Tubal. So he's not only talking about lands, he's talking about the guy in charge. That could be in the, the Hebrew name for Kim, or it could be for Hitler. It's not Hitler because he's dead. Uh, it could be Putin. It doesn't, you know, whoever. Whoever's in charge. And by none of them, none of them matter. They're just man. God could blow them away. They're just men. In fact, look at verse 4. He says, I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaw. You, you that go fishing, God will take these tyrants and just grab them like a hook in the jaw of a fish and pull them around. God's not impressed. Look at verse 5. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with them, all of them, with shield and helmet. Verse 6, Gomer and all his bands in the house of Tagamah, uh, of the north quarters and all his bands, many of these people, look over to uh, verse 14. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, thus saith the Lord God, in the day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shalt thou not know it. Now, we've got countries out of the north, we've got countries out of the east, and there is a lot of trouble going on, or brewing for the nation of Israel. 
Persia, be Iran probably. And so all these countries all working their way over to attack Israel. That right now, uh, China, uh, or that right now Russia has gone to the Ukraine, that's not even a big deal. You know those people have been fighting over land forever? Does anybody remember the un Union of the Soviet Socialist Republic? It wasn't that long ago. And it was not a union. What we are in America, we're a union. Because one state at a time chose to join. Nobody chose to join the USSR. They were beaten into submission. That's the difference between freedom and tyranny. And you young people, don't you let any of those teachers in the schools tell you how bad capitalism and American freedom is. People are coming to America from all over the world because we're free. And uh, to, to force you to do something is not freedom. And that's what the whole philosophy, certainly, of China and Russia is. And so go to that next map there. Just to, This is kind of a summarize it. Here's this old city of Jerusalem. And again, all of this, this here's Jerusalem. This is Israel. This is not about what's going on right now in, uh, in uh, Europe and Russia and all. That's not about, it's not about the Ukraine. It's about that spot right there. It's all about Jerusalem. And sadly to uh, a lot of people in America, it's not about Washington, D.C. I'm not a brilliant scholar, but I, I don't see America even in this. So if you're worried about a nuke going off, probably should. Just put your mask on and be socially distanced. You'll be safe. <laughs> Just make sure your mask is nuclear resistant. <laughs> if a nuclear bomb hits, I just want to be close. What a good way to go. What would you rather have? High blood pressure and cholesterol slowly rot your carcass? And a nuke, pff, gone. I'm saved. I know where I'm going. I'm going straight to be with Jesus. Nothing to worry about. And, uh, and, 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 you know, I'm a, I am a pro-Second Amendment, uh, bare arms kind of person, but I'll tell you what, they're not going to help when the nukes drop. <laughs> and, anyway, unless you're close enough to get rid of one bad guy you wanted to do it personally, I don't know. But, but the, it's all about all these nations there. It's all coming here. So what's going on in, in the Europe and what's going on in Southeast Asia? It's all about that piece of dirt right there because that is the city of God why is why is it such a, a big thing because the devil hates everything God loves that's why the devil's after our marriages because God thinks marriage is honorable that's why the devil's against you young people because God has a very special place in his heart for young people God loves he calls you the fruit of the nation he calls you very precious this book, to, this book says so much about how we ought to raise and train up our children to love God. Young people are so precious to God. So that's why the devil uses drugs, and, and that's why there's the heroin, and that's why there's the fentanyl and all that stuff. Why is all that coming into our country? Because the devil hates you. And that's why Jesus came, because God loves you. And this piece of dirt right there, God set that up. And by the way, it's a pretty ugly piece of dirt. There's nothing attractive about Israel or Jerusalem, but, it's, but it is to God. God says, beautiful for situation. You know why? Because God sees what it's going to look like. And we'll get into that later. But let's, let's uh, look at another verse here. Um, let's see. Uh, we looked at verse 5. Uh, let's go down. Um, there's all these verses I've got marked in too many places. Flip to that next picture and go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Way to your New Testament, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. All right, while, while, you, uh, while, while these armies are all fighting over the east, while these armies are 200 million man, woman army going to 
conquer Israel, people from the north and the south, people from Africa, people from the east, people from the north, while they're all coming, where are you going to be if you're saved? Now, I don't mean if you're a good person. I don't mean if you're a Baptist. God looked down at, uh, God looked down at the world condemned in sin. We're sinners. We're sinners. I'm a sinner. And God says, I am holy, and I cannot let sin into heaven. But God didn't want you to go to hell, so God sent his son to pay for your sin so you could go to heaven. No religion has that. I was talking to a Hindu man this last week. He has no hope. When he dies, he has no idea. You know, the Hindus have like 200 million gods. How do you know which one to pray to? It's crazy, and they have no hope of eternity. And Jesus said, I'll die for you, and I'll pay your way. It's like your dad, young people. It's like your dad paying your way into Disneyland. It's almost death to get a family into Disneyland. It's so expensive. And um, it's like your dad, some of you, paying your way to college. And, um, and you parents do what you want, but I think kids ought to work. And, um, and you figure it out how you want to do it, but... But I think a kid ought to, I think college ought to cost that kid something. They'll get better grades and they'll stop going if it's not worth it to them. But if it's out of your pocket, yeah, free party. Um, that's just a lot of child ring stuff there. So what happens? Jesus died for you. He hung on the cross and he died for your sins and for mine. And then he said, if you will accept me, if you'll trust me, I'll let you into heaven. So. This now is talking about those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. If you are saved, not if you're a Baptist, not if you're a Lutheran, a Mormon, a Methodist, a Muslim. If you have Christ, no prophet ever died for his people. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not, not Joseph Smith, um, only Jesus. If you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, he chose to save you. And so we'll look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Down about verse 16. For the Lord himself shall come from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the dead uh, in Christ shall rise first. See this here? All over the world, people are going to be caught up. Right, if right now the trumpet sounded, we would be flying right through the roof. Now you're glad that you're going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. I never really thought about it, but if you weren't instantly changed, Brother Gip mentioned this in his sermon. You'd go up, hit the ceiling, punk, punk, punk. And that's not a good thing. But anyway, uh, if you look there, in, um, and that's 1 Corinthians 15, you can look at it. But look there at verse 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. If you are in Christ, if you have trusted him as Savior, you are going to be caught right out of that grave. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And so that's what's going to happen here. Give us that next picture. And this is what's going to be on earth. There you are. They say, who is that? I don't know, but they ain't there anymore. Now the question is, are you going or are you staying? And it's all up to you. You say, I don't understand it. Then you better talk with us some and figure it out. Let's talk. Let's understand. All right, go to that next picture. Um, there's going to happen. Uh, look over back to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. And um, just the pictures are just to keep your attention. Revelation chapter 6. Now, we are already in heaven. Let me, let me give you the, uh, the timeline, okay? Over here, the, the armies of the world are planning on going to Israel. Then there's a trumpet. You and I are caught up together with the Lord. We're up in heaven, and God begins to send trouble on earth. And it starts, one of the beginning things is these four horses. Look at chapter 6 and verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse... And he that sat on him had a bow, like a bow and arrow. And a crown was given to him, and he went forth to conquering and to conquer. So there is a white horse, and the guy, the angel on that is going to conquer. Verse 3, 
And when he'd opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that, and that they should kill one another. And there was given him a great sword. When that red horse uh, and that angel comes down to the, to the world, people are going to become out of their head violent. I had a guy in a gun shop. I was looking at some guns with my son, and this is many years ago, Josh that sang up here. He was a little guy, and, and this guy, you that are, know your eschatology a little, and, and we're looking at these, and he said, this is the gun you want. And it was a, a 22 Ruger with a, uh, like, I've got one now, but it didn't at the time, and stainless steel, won't rust, and, and I said, and why would I want that? He said, when you get into the tribulation, you can carry 10,000 rounds of 22 ammo. Try doing that with 45. And I said, well, that would work for you, but I'm not going to the tribulation. <laughs> but you can have all of my 22 ammo that's left when I go. <laughs> that's a difference of opinion about the end time. But the, the trip, what we're reading about here is the time of Jacob's trouble. You're not Jacob, you're the bride. Jacob is Israel, and Israel's getting, the, they're getting whooped because they were bad. All right, look at verse, um, verse 5. When he opened the third seal, uh, I heard a third beast say, Come and see, and behold, and lo, a black horse. And him that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Then I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. Now, what a penny. Remember when the guy uh, brought the people to work in his field? Remember he paid them a penny a day? Remember that? And a measure of barley, it's all interpretation, but a measure would be what your family needs for the day or maybe what you need for the day. So basically you will, and some people say the measure is for one meal, but however you want to go with it, you're going to work all day just to be able to eat. Nothing else. Not house, not utility bills, not $9 a gallon gas, nothing. You know what that third horse is? Inflation. It's going to be so expensive, you won't be able to buy food at the grocery store. And that orange tree in your backyard, you know, I, my mom's got a grapefruit tree. I don't eat those grapefruit. But if I was here during the tribulation, I'd eat grapefruit. Um, grapefruit's a little anyway. You know what, I might even, I might even, I don't know what I'd eat. I'd eat probably anything. It's going to be bad. See, on earth, there's going to be food problems. There's going to be, people are going to be crazy out of their head, killing each other. The world's going to go crazy. And it started out, remember, it started with one-third of the world's population dying. So right away, we've got two billion or more people killed. And then you've got uh, out-of-control violence, craziness, inflation. Look over at verse 7. We're in Revelation 6. Revelation 6, verse 7. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a, four, a voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him with him, and power was given to him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. You know, when you can't buy food for your child, are you going to be feeding that German shepherd? Those coyotes you hear now and then that live on chihuahuas and cats? When there's no food, those coyotes are coming looking for you if you're not saved. Um, people are going to be killing each other. The, the guys who have the whole garage filled with um, survival food, you know, it's good for 25 years. We're going to see you're not losing weight. All right, the rest of us are getting skinny and you're staying plump. We are coming for your survival food if we're here. But I'm not going to be here. But don't think some unsaved crazy guy is not going to come looking. You know the, the gold you invested in? How are you going to buy a loaf of bread with gold? Way better to put your money in the offering and put your gold up in heaven where moth and rust don't corrupt and thieves don't break through and steal. This, it's all, now, I, I, I'm being a little vague because we don't know. 
We know these things are going to happen, but knowing exactly when and how, there's going to be murder. There's going to be people crazy out of their head. There's going to be killing. The animals are going to be attacking the people. And just the dogs in my neighborhood, people walk their dogs, big old dogs. They're going to be eating your little dog. I'll feed my little dogs to them here. <laughs> Not a big deal. <laughs> uh, go to that next picture. What do we have next up there? This is going to be the beginning of absolute um, trouble. The Bible calls it the Great Tribulation. Um, judgments, the trumpets, earthquakes, hurricanes. Go to the next picture. There's going to be war and violence. There's going to be fire coming down out of heaven. Go to the next picture. This is, and there's going to be, you talk about violence, beyond words violence, armies crashing down on one another it is going to be a terrible terrible time of war you've got china and the kings of the east coming from there you've got russia and the and germany and the kings from there coming south and out of control war and again where are you going to be go to the next picture there's going to be city city after city burned up go to the next one we got to watch the clock a little bit here um, i'm not sure but i want to be right there Revelation 4 says we're going to be on our knees, on our face, before the throne of God. I'm not worried about war. I'm looking forward to this day. And by the way, you might worry a little bit about that day. Now, if you're saved, you're going to heaven, but it'll be a scary day. Go to one more picture there. There's going to be a marriage. Look over to Revelation chapter 19. I'm skipping a little bit here for the sake of time. While the four horsemen are bringing the most terrible violence and destruction. And by the way, if you don't think Islam today would blow up every city in America if they could, you're not paying attention. Um, Brooke, I can't pronounce Brooke's last name. She's uh, from, she speaks Persian. She's from Iran. Um, she got saved and, and um, came to our church for a long time, but uh, she's going to a a more Persian type church now, but good, good Christian lady. She said, there is not a peaceful Muslim. She said, there is no such thing. She said, if you are a Muslim, you are at war with the West. That's, I didn't say that's what she said. She said, now you might not be a very good Muslim. You just might not care. But she said, if you are any kind of Muslim, you'd push the button to nuke L.A., or Washington or Seattle now you wonder where is America in Bible prophecy well there's a, over a billion Muslims in the world fastest growing religion in the world and uh, and our president has opened the border up to as many of them as want to come in and if they want to kill us with fentanyl or kill us with with nukes um, it's a reality all right you look at Revelation 19 Revelation 19 look down at verse 9 Revelation 19, 9, and he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And look, this, this marriage supper. Oh, that's a laser. Um, got it in the wrong hand. But I woke up Herbie. Uh, this marriage supper. You and I were caught up into heaven and war, terrible war, the worst war ever in the history. Could you imagine a war when a third of the earth's population dies the first day? Terrible war. And you and I fall on our faces before God and worship him. And then he says, being a Baptist, because Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And uh, I'm joking, but anyway, sort of. Um, he says, look, you want to stay for dinner? And the, the great buffet, no calories, no fat grams. There will be no gluten-free food there. Uh, there's going to be pork 
pulled pork sandwiches, barbecued pork. For you farm people, head cheese made right from the pig head. That's disgusting, but my grandma would make it. Look at Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21, you there? Go to that next picture. I don't know which one's next. I'm out of my order there. <laughs> While this is going on on earth, 200 million man army, look at Revelation 21, where the Christian will be. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Go ahead and flip that next picture. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. You know, back in the Garden of Eden, way back here in Genesis 3, God walked with man, and they sinned. And God couldn't allow them in his presence anymore. And for all these years, God is setting the stage for redemption. He's letting the crowd that doesn't want God to have whatever they want. God will not force you to follow him. He invites you to follow him. And he says, I'm going to come back for you. And I'm going to bring you home with me. And we're going to set the dinner table. And we're going to have this place. And again, we will be with God. See, what God started back here in the garden every day, God walked with Adam and Eve. That's what God wants. And one day, we're going to all, and by the way, it is getting close. And I, I can't in 30 or 40 minutes even get, get close to explaining prophetic events. But what we're seeing in Europe and in uh, Russia and China going on right now, and, and it's key what's going on in Washington. We needed President Biden in order for Putin to do what he's doing. Because President Trump would have squashed him. So are you glad Biden's president? No, I love America. But that's my home. And that's the good news. So if your business is doing good, fine. If your business isn't doing good, fine still. Eat, drink, love your spouse, love your children. Don't let, the, don't let this world shove you full of medication. And I don't care what doctor gave it to you. You've got to make the decision what goes in your body. Um, and I can't make it. You've got to make the decision. But I guarantee you this idea of this decision between you and your doctor. No, it's between me and God. Because doctors aren't agreeing on all this junk going on, whether it be heart medicine. I, you that were not here, some couple of years ago, I had a minor heart surgery, and this doctor had been prescribing medicine for me. Take this for your heart. And I read the side effects. I said, no, I'm not taking it. So I, didn't, I was home when I made the decision. So I go back a couple weeks later, and he says, you taking that medicine? I said, no. He said, why? I said, I read the side effects. I'm not putting that in my body. He said, you should take it. I said, I'm not. And no joke is exactly what he did. He leaned over the desk and said, I wouldn't take it either. The heart doctor that prescribed me the medicine said he wouldn't take it. I, I was kind of thinking I'd like to lean over and slap him. <laughs> he prescribed medicine for me he didn't think was good. I just want you to understand the medical industry isn't all that awesome. I, I don't want to do without it. I don't want Pat McDowell doing surgery on my kidneys. I mean, I'm grateful for every doctor and nurse. I'm not, I'm not belittling them. I'm just saying you better think through what you do. But you know what? Hope, hope is that day. You got one more? Flip to that last picture. Hope is that day. The new Jerusalem. The place Jesus reigns from. Hope is the, the new Jerusalem coming down from God as a bride adorned for a husband. And there's going to be the old Jerusalem rebuilt down here where Jesus will reign. And the, the whole sermon, you can flip, get rid of those. The whole point of all this. If you want to go back, Ezekiel's got a lot more, but we need to stop. The, the, oh, you got... Uh, we got to, well, we got to see the last one. Look over to Revelation 19. We can't shut it off. Forget your lunch. You're not that hungry. 
You need a diet anyway. Look at Revelation 19. You got to see this. I love, not that the picture's so great, I love the story. When my son Josh back there, when he was little, we read this together often. I don't know if it was his favorite story or my favorite story. But look at Revelation uh, chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called, look at the capital F and the capital T, faithful and true. And he'll come and be a peacemaker. Oh, it doesn't say that, does it? <laughs> In righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Look at, he's coming again. And look at this. Where are you going to be in the story? Verse 12, his eyes were the flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture, a cloak dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And, and lest there be any questions, Jesus is leading the charge, and we're going along. Go to the next picture. Is I'm not sure artistically this is exactly right. I don't believe Jesus had long hair. That's just me, all right? Since the Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. You know what? If you don't like horseback riding, you will. You know, Grandma's using the walker. No walkers. You're going to leap on a horse. Jesus is going to say, uh, what do they say on wagon train? Wagons, ho. And we're all coming back. This is... Don't worry. That's a sermon. Don't worry. All the mess, all of the evil a Putin could possibly put together means nothing compared to the goodness of God. We have a great God, faithful God. And we're going to not only live through it, we are going to reign through it. And everything's all right in our Father's house. Let's pray. Father, bless us as we go. And, and uh, Lord, thank you that there is promise of eternity. And uh, all that Russia could do and all that China could do and all that the other countries could do, they mean nothing compared to what our God can do. Those kings of the East, they may think they're important until Jesus comes back. And so we look forward to seeing you. Help us to be faithful until the trumpet sounds when we are caught up together to meet you in the clouds. If someone here today isn't saved, if someone here is not sure, they don't understand, please, you help them to learn, help them to figure things out. You're a good God. You love them. and You love them more than we could love them, so help us. And for those that are fretting and worrying, please help us to realize our God is so worthy of our trust. May we rest in you. Uh, may we shut the news off, the fear-mongering, uh, the panic over the economy and the panic over war and the panic over nuclear bombs and the panic over a ridiculous president. Oh, none of this had happened without you. You're a good God, a faithful God. And may we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand just for a moment with our heads bowed. Just take a moment, you and God alone. Would you do that as the instruments play? If you want to take a moment to pray at your seat or at the altar, you that are young, uh, love God. Get out of school. Get married. Get a good job. Have a good family. You that are older, relax. We're closer than ever to the happily ever after. If you're not sure heaven is your home and you'd like to talk to one of us about it, our staff is here. Please slip out of your seat up to the front, shake my hand or one of our hands up here. We'll show you out of a Bible how you could be saved. We'll come to your home and sit and talk with you, answer questions. You've got, a, you've got a God who loves you. Those little children you're raising, raise them for God. Raise them for God and for his glory. What a great privilege. If you've been fretting and worrying, relax. Just commit it to God. You young people, don't you let this godless school, schools get you worried. You relax. Trust God. 
Pray God helps you get into our Christian school. We'd love all you teenagers in our Christian school if God would get us a way to do it. Father, bless us as we go today. Thank you for giving us so much. We sure love you. And give us a good day. Bless your people. May our afternoon please you. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you go, stay in your place.